So we're ready for game action. So glad you're with us here on L28. Another great sports broadcast for you. We're so excited in this one because long overdue, we wanted to come out here and do a broadcast for Antelope Valley Baseball, but we had something called a hailstorm last week. California looked like Texas, if you know what I mean, but now we're here on a beautiful, gorgeous day, and we'll be uh, bringing you not only Antelope Valley and the Antelopes, but they'll be facing off against one of the top teams in the Golden League in Quartz Hill. They're known as the Royals. Quartz Hill comes in, by the way, with an 18-5 and five mark and 8-2 and two in the hotly contested Golden League. As for Antelope Valley, it's been a year of struggles. They're 1-14 overall and yet to have won even one game in Golden League play there. They've run the table in the opposite direction, 0-10. So taking a look at the standings, of course, in the Golden League, Highland and Lancaster atop the heap. They are 9-1. and one. Then one game back, this Quartz Hill team will be bringing you in just a few minutes. And then Palmdale comes in itself at 4-5. and five. And then the bottom feeder, unfortunately, the pride of the Antelopes. Again, they're at 0-10. A bit of, a, again, a breeze. We took a look across the street, the Antelope Valley Adult School. That's the only sign we have it's old glory on its staff out there and it's blowing right now in a northeasterly direction so any ball hit to center field and possibly even to right field has a chance to get out of this ballpark by the way it's the largest in the golden lead a very expansive one it's a symmetrical ballpark built way back in the day i i cringe to think how old it is but one indicator of a very old ballpark take a look and our cameraman will get that as we go along from home plate to the backstop is about 35 feet here 
So when a ball gets away on a wild pitcher pass ball, the catcher has to go after it, and it's not going to just carry him back like a hockey puck. Also, plenty of space down the lines, so this is no doubt a pitcher's ballpark. Antelope Valley will be shorthanded in this game. Anthony Cardenas, he's a 438 hitter with an over 500 on base percentage. He's not available for this game for the Antelopes, so it's going to be even tougher for them. As for Quartz Hill, they got their complete contingent, including the coach's son, Jeffrey Cavanaugh, and of course, uh, the Cantero twins, and we're going to highlight them during the game. Isaac and Ishmael, they'll be out there in this ball game. All right, we'd like to send it over to Tiff, so here we go with our pregame show. It is a bright and beautiful sunny day today in Lancaster, especially for baseball. We are here at AV High School, the one location where my dad says, I'm walking on legendary land, so I want to get all of the energy that I possibly can from this ground where there are legendary athletes born and raised here. Today's matchup is between Quartz Hill High School and AV High School. Quartz Hill High School is currently landing in third place in the Golden League. AV High School is standing in eighth place. This week at practice, I had the pretty wonderful conversation with assistant coach Jared Westberg that initiated from how influential of an athlete my amazing father, Marco Johnson, has been for the AV High School community. AV is known for having the most legendary athletes for decades throughout the Antelope Valley. Yet over the past few years, it seems they continue to be underwater. Coach Westberg stated, these kids have heart and so do we as coaches. Yet with underfunding and the needing of recruitment, it's been tough since COVID to come back from this. With Westbrook being part of the last class to experience a CIF championship win at AV High Football, he only wishes to bring that same uh, stamina and exposure to these young men and generations to come. Now, head coach Damon Williams is taking the initiative to get more momentum behind the baseball program by now adding a summer baseball camp to the calendar. As the only on-campus coach on the roster, he has a heart for these young men to not just be great on the field, but also be great contributors to society. With adding this summer program, this can add the possibility for these young men to have the confidence to play on the field and to know that they can get AV High School Baseball back on the map. For those of you that are tuning in and are OGs of the Antelope Valley, the one word I can give to you is to check in on the high schools that made you who you are today. This baseball program was legendary for years and the reason why they're struggling right now is because they don't have the funds from their alumni so if I was you I would definitely challenge you to check into AV high school and see how you can still be a proud lope from day to day just like my parents who are celebrating 30 years of marriage from being high school sweethearts years ago today we're also going to feature on L28 sports broadcasting a check-in on two teams that are fighting for first place in the Golden League that is Lancaster High School and Highland High School both having a record of nine and one we're excited to see these legendary schools head to head today with Courtsville High School and AV High School. Back to you, Ronnie. Coverage. Share this link to watch your favorite player on the field. All right, let's take a look at the starting lineups here for the Royals of Courts Hill. The visitors finding themselves again 8-2 and two in the Golden League. So leading off, the catcher, Esteban Sepulveda. At second base is Johnny Morris. Then comes Jeffrey Cavanaugh in center field. Isaac Quintero at first. At the hot corner at third, Blake Johnson. In right, Troy Johnson. Then comes the left fielder, Connor G Gregory. Johnny Nahar, the starting pitcher. And the number nine hitter, Owen Rice, the shortstop, Nahar, an interesting story, we'll tell it in a little bit, but there's kind of like, I would think, a dual uh, loyalty because he's connected to the San Antonio Valley team even though he himself is pitching for Quartz Hill. Now the home squad, San Antonio Valley, 0-10 in the golden. Shortstop, Jonathan Edwards will be leading off. Andres Rubido in left. The second baseman, Jackson Williams. Cleanup hitter, Jacob Long in right. The pitcher, Jose Garcia. Then comes the catcher, Anthony Lopez. At third, Luis Vega. 
In center field, Jeremiah Johnson. And at first base, Aaron Mendez. So both coaches out there with the obligatory handshakes and, of course, a good friend of this broadcast and acting in his own duality as athletic director slash baseball coach, and he's out there right now at home plate. I'm talking about, again, Aaron Cavanaugh, no doubt the dean of Golden League coaches. Next to him, a great guy, Damon Williams, taking over during the COVID crisis and really has an El Capitan that he must scale. It's a difficult task for him and trying to get a winner together. And it's not something that just happened overnight in terms of, again, Enlo Valley baseball having problems. When you speak of Aaron Cavanaugh, 19th year at Quartz Hill, he has never, not once, lost a ball game to the San Low Valley team. So that's something that gets very depressing when you're a program and you're trying to move up to the next level. But remember the great disparity. You've got a Golden League, and not all the teams are equal, as we gave you the standings a moment ago. Highland and Lancaster top the heap, along with Quartz Hill. But then the disparity is very clear when you get to Palmdale, and even more so with Anlo Valley trying to get settled and create a winning program here in Lancaster. And I'm talking about Anlo Valley's campus. And they go way back because folks that are in the Anlo Valley know all too well. Anlo Valley High School has been around since 1912, and they've had some incredible athletic moments, and it's really something that they want to work on and develop their baseball program and getting them back to the top of the heap. As for Aaron Cavanaugh, he's got his son out there, a senior who looks like he's going to be heading over to Anlo Valley College. That'll be exciting, but not in the game of baseball. Jeff Cavanaugh is going there to play football. So we'll keep an eye on him and his progress. Still, the long conversation continues at home plate. By the way, we've got that new feature, and we're continuing it. We will be sharing scores of other games at intervals. That's what we've instituted. And what game is more important than, again, the Golden League battle today, Lancaster taking on Highland, and at intervals, we'll be giving you updates of that ball game. All right, Damon heading back to his appropriate dugout. So again, we know it is an old-fashioned field. Another thing about it, you may be surprised, the old-fashioned field were more inclined to be symmetrical. This one is an eight-foot barrier, 330 down the lines, a full 400 to center in the most expansive, largest field in the Golden League. And again, we talked about on our pregame show all the area along, not only behind the plate, but down the lines that's really beneficial to pitchers. But when the wind kicks up here, no ball is safe to center or right field. None. That makes all the difference in the world. So it's major league dimensions here. But again, the wind is something that even Major League Baseball said for minor league baseball to survive in Lancaster. A lot of baseballs were flying out in Lancaster and Adelanto. And that doesn't give always an accurate reading to the scouts, the major league people, to find out someone's true value. As for Quartz Hill this year, they are a home run laden team. They've got Esteban Sepulveda out there, and he's hit five homers this year. By the way, next week we're back on the air Monday with a softball game, and then Tuesday, oh, a great doubleheader on L28, Tuesday, the 23rd, back on with Quartz Hill at their home yard, and we're looking forward to that. On the hill right now, ready with the obligatory eight warm-up pitches. That is one. Jose Garcia. They're adorned in their good-looking white uniform, and they've got the right white shoe and the dark hat. As for Quartz Hill, oh, talking about something that stands out, aqua blue top, gray pant, and a dark helmet or hat. And there you have it. 
Garcia and Lopez, your battery for the Lopes of Enlo Valley. Mendez, Williams, Edwards, and Vega around the horn. And here's your outfield for the Lopes. Rubido in left. Johnson in center. Jacob Long in right. Starting out for Quartz Hill will be Esteban Sepulveda, the one we talked about with the great home run stroke. Now, we talked about a few minutes ago, the flag on the staff at the Animal Valley Adult School across the street was blowing maybe at a 12 to 16 mile an hour clip. Right now it's gone down considerably, but still enough for this young man, Esteban Sepulveda, to park one. And we're just about ready for game action. Sure, glad you're with us. And here's the offering down low in the dirt, and we are off and running. Sepulveda, Mares, and then Kavanaugh to begin things in the first right now for Quartz Hill. Number 19 up there, his numbers speak for themselves. Garcia comes right back, and it's 2-0 and with a slider in the dirt. Sepulveda, not only the five homers, 18 runs batted in. What's really impressive is his slugging average. Truly off the charts at 785. Wow. That's in the ionosphere. And he gets on base over 50% of the time. 2 0 pitch. It's good enough for a strike on the inside part of the plate. We've got the full contingent of the L28 crew here. I feel very comfortable. Got a good group behind me to back it up and make it happen. And this pitch is a fastball to strike the count even at 2-2. Two and two. Again, Sepulveda, Mares, Kavanaugh, Quintero, Johnson, and Troy Johnson. They're unrelated, Blake and Troy. Gregory, Nahar, and Rice. That's Quartz Hill this afternoon. Excuse me, swing, fouled away. Still it remains at 2-2. Two and two. So Damon... Williams, the head coach of Antelope Valley, in a different, it's a different kettle of fish for him than Quartz Hill, Aaron Cavanaugh. Aaron, we already talked about, he's also the athletic director, pitch taken inside, and the count pull at three and two. Well, Aaron, I smell Hall of Fame, okay? That's what I'm talking about, Aaron Cavanaugh. But Damon, he's just trying to get his feet wet. And the pitch high and inside, ball four. So that won't hurt his on-base percentage. In fact, I said over 500. It's even better than that. Taking a look, it's 562. On first base, thanks to the walk, top of the first inning, Johnny Morris, the hitter. They did a lot of cleanup and work on this field. Not just because of courts he'll come to town. They told us because l 28s covering it. Hey, we appreciate it. The curveball, it's a strike 0 and 1. Can't wait to see one again put in, put in, well, going airborne, let me put it that way. Yeah, I really want to see it. I want to see if there's a jet stream there. Instead, hits it hard down the shortstop, recovers the long throw, and it's not in time. Shortstop, that's Jonathan Edwards there. And he had to set. It was not a fluid motion. He had to set. And then that allowed enough time for the speedster, Morris, to leg it out. You know what? I'm going to give him the infield single. That was a tough That was a tough chance for John Edwards. And here's Jeff Cavanaugh, the coach's son. The coach's son, I don't know what they're feeding him in the Cavanaugh household. Look at him. And he loves football, but can usually play hoops as well as the offering is down low in the dirt. 6-1, and a very, again, angular 150 pounds. He's second in RBIs, if you can believe it, in the CIF Southern Section, Division Two, that is, and the pitch is a strike. Division Two, here facing off against Division Seven. We had somewhat of that same disparity last week in our softball game, and the score reflected it. Let's see if that's going to happen here. Runner takes a generous lead, and here's the pitch. Down in the dirt, it gets away from the catcher, and scooting now over there into second and third is Sepulveda and Morris. 
bounced in front of the plate. Not the catcher's fault. That's a wild pitch. Kavanaugh now can add to his great RBI total right here and break the ice. No score, top of the first, but the Royals are threatening. Oh, that one got away from the catcher through his legs, and here comes the runner to the plate to score. And again, see all that room behind the plate? That gives him a lot of time to get around and to score easily, and Sepulveda does one nothing. Quartz Hill. Kavanaugh up there waiting. Oh, we have to apologize. There is a scoreboard out there beyond left field, but it's not on. It's not operative. So we'll try to keep an eye on this, particularly with the umpire's finger motions. Uh, pitch, it's ball four. So two walks surrendered and a hit by Mares. One runner over and the hitter at the plate, Isaac Quintero. So that's their moniker, their gnome de plume, the Royals, and now I get it, that, again, light blue. It's not royal blue, but it's the colors of the Kansas City Royals. That's what they look like. That's their color down low into the dirt. So already the catcher, Anthony Lopez, has had to try to deal with situations, a couple of wild pitches, a ball that he couldn't find and it was right there below him. But that's the, again, issue facing all catchers. Where am I? Spatial dimensions. Oh, this is hit high and deep to left field. It's going to be trouble. It's going to fall in front of the center fielder, Johnson, as the runner will score that time. One over on the long single that time from Isaac Quintero, and we've got a 2 nothing ball game. So Quintero, a solid swing. And, by the way, they have not registered an out in this inning. The great hope right now, if you're an Antelope fan and Damon Williams, is that this first four batters does not portend to a very difficult ball game afternoon here. Already down 2 nothing. The fastball is a strike to number 21, Blake Johnson. Blake Johnson, Troy Johnson in the lineup. The unrelated Johnson boys on the field right now. Curve ball, and that's high. Some open area, particularly down the lines, uh, not the left field line, that is, the right field line. Like a veritable death valley out there if he does go the other way as the pitch. That one is taken high. It's two and one. So many hitters now don't go with the pitch and don't try to place the ball. They just swing away. Everything's about, again, the long ball. Pitch inside, three and one. There was a great baseball player way back in the day, but what he said, his axiom, is apropos to today. Hit them where they ain't. <laughs> and, and that would be great if he followed that down the right field line, but instead it's ball four in the dirt. There's nothing to swing at there. Three walks issued in the inning. A couple of, again, singles. Nobody out. And here's Troy Johnson. Troy at 317 this year on a team that's really fired up in terms of the Golden League. Quartz Hill. I'm talking about league action now, not overall. 332 team average. Garcia into the windup, and the offering is taken that time for a strike. It's 0-1. If we make a few errors, we don't always see what the umpire's designation, you'll know why. Scoreboard malfunction. Oh, cued left side out of play. Just got a little piece of that. There's a number of players out there. We're getting the first opportunity for Antelope Valley. Uh, Luis Vega at third. That's his first time at third this year. Jacob Long and Wright, also first-timer. And Jose Garcia on the hill has not started a game this year for Antelope Valley. Kicks and fires away. In the dirt now, it gets away from the catcher. Here comes the runner to the plate. Head first slide. Very exciting, but he didn't have to do that. But it's still 
gets the fans excited. That was the coach's son, again, Kavanaugh, adding a little color to it and making it 3 nothing. It's not a popular way of sliding anymore. The head first slide used to be able to practice off a diving board at a pool, but there's no more diving boards anymore. It's a very risky thing and dangerous. He did it anyway and did score. Three, nothing. High pop-up now ranging over, and the first baseman's got it. There's got to be a bit of the high sky syndrome going on. It's not easy to pick off a baseball off that sky, but he did it. The first baseman, Aaron Mendez. So with that pop out, number four steps in there. And my score sheet, he must have made a change because I don't have a number four listed here. And I just got this again lineup from Coach Kavanaugh this morning. So I already made a change. Hit her at the plate. Supposed to be Connor Gregory's spot. Garcia, the delivery, is good enough for a strike. Runner 90 feet away from scoring the fourth run of the inning. Three nothing right now. Before the seats even get warm here in La Valley. From a stretch to improve his control, comes right back. A lot of bird dogging going on. That, that was a slider misses outside. Trying to throw off the concentration of the pitcher and a right-handed pitcher. He's not only looking at the batter, but he's looking right at that, again, runner at third base who's doing a lot of gesturing, posturing. It's his time on the stage. Ground ball, however, knocked down by Vega. Recovers. Here's the throw. Safe at first. Runner scores. 4 nothing. Quartz Hill. Okay, they changed the uniform on me. Thank you. Troy Johnson was the one at the plate. It happens in high school. It's a way of life. Okay, so as a result, Troy popped out. Connor Gregory with that hot shot to third base. Infield hit. Scored a run. 4 nothing, And it looks like Johnny Nahar at the plate. But we got number 15, so we'll have to check on that one as well. That's another number that didn't show up here on my scorecard. So some wholesale changes on the part of the coach, and we're going to try to work through it right now. Remember, 4 nothing runner at first base, bounced in the dirt, good save from a catcher who's very beleaguered back there. He's, like, caught an entire ball game with all this problems and trepidations right here in the first inning. It's been a real struggle for Anthony. See how he gets through it. Swung on and missed. Boy, did he take a big grip at that one. Couldn't catch up with it. So showing velocity that time, Jose Garcia. But right now down 4 nothing. There's a great difference in these teams. That has to be taken into account. Garcia winds and fires away. It's up high. Count now 2-2. Two and two. Couldn't get a better day, and usually when the wind kicks up, that presents all kinds of problems. But nary a breeze right now. Swung on and missed, and that is strike three, is it? Yeah, he's asking if he did foul tip it at all and checking with his coach Kavanaugh down there. He's saying, no, that wasn't the third strike. Kavanaugh, if we could read his lips, says, oh, really? So that hitter's been dispatched. He's gone with the strikeout. All right, now he got it straightened out. This is the number nine hitter, and appropriately enough, number nine, Aaron Owen Rice. Pretty much straight away, left, center, and right. Right is, unfortunately, really giving him the complete right field line if he wants to go there. Down low in the dirt, Rice, one of the few hitters on Quartz Hill, under 300, 273 this year. 
and the dean of, of course, Antelope Valley High School coaches, Aaron Cavanaugh, getting the job done in the third base coach, coach's box as the pitch is a fastball, and it's outside 2-0. and For nothing, Quartz Hill. We're only in this, the top of the first. From a stretch to improve his control, runners at first and second, comes right back, high pop-up, and it will drift foul and out of play. So much history on this campus. And we had to, again, mention Tiffany's wonderful father, who's enshrined in the Hall of Fame here, Antelope Valley High School Hall of Fame, Marco Johnson. She always gets a warm feeling coming back to this campus, even though she's out of paraclete, just because of what her father achieved here, pitch high and inside. Weather Channel told us temperatures in the low 80s will drift down into the high 70s before this game is over. Comes right back, and that one is going to be a strike. One of the rare ones uh, for Jose Garcia that's not a swinging strike. And that'll make it a full count right now. For nothing, Quartzill and looking for more, runners take their appropriate leads off first and second. Waiting is Owen Rice. Here's the pitch. There he goes. He hits it in right field. We just talked about that. That drives in one, makes it 5 nothing, and then one Royal will make it all the way over, scampering the third, and they've got runners at first and third and just because of the RBI single on the part of Owen Rice. And, again, we go back to that old saying, hit it where they ain't, and he went to the other way. Good for him. So many of those time-honored situational hitting exploits that we've come to love and know in baseball over 100 years have just been forgotten for the long ball. That was situational hitting. Now, I know Owen Rice is not a home run hitter per se, but still he did what he had to do. And they're up 5 nothing, heading to the top of the order. Here's a real home run hitter at the plate now, Esteban T Sepulveda, and the pitch is high, 1-0. Amazing numbers for this young man. The five homers in number 20 in California. Runner goes. Is he going to throw? No. Fakes throwing because that was an opportunity if he throws it to second for that runner at third to break home. So give Anthony Lopez a lot of credit. Sure, it's a win-win situation for the Royals because now they've got two runners in scoring position, a 5 nothing, and it's a 1-0 and count to Esteban. Garcia rocks and fires away. The pitch is up high. I get the feeling he'd much rather walk him as he did to start this inning out. By the way, they batted around in the inning. Garcia backwards glance of the runners, and this pitch is high. Yeah, he really wants nothing to do with Sepulveda. Oftentimes, you'd come to believe that a, a hitter of this prowess would be hitting in the cleanup spot. Kavanaugh's got him hitting first. And the pitcher's got to be shaking in his boots from it, fouled away. So Esteban, three and one to him. When I say number 20 in California, it's not something just to ho-hum about or yawn about because you know there's hundreds of high schools out there. And that's a remarkable number, the five homers. By the way, he's number one in the Golden League with the five. Comes right back, pitch down low. That's ball four. So just because of the fear of Esteban, that keeps his on-base percentage well over 500. In this game, his on-base percentage is 1,000. And here comes Johnny Morris. Well, this has to be a record for not just the first inning on L28, but the longest first half of an inning. And that was a floater. It looked almost like a folly floater, but that instead was off speed, and it's a strike, 0-1. One more time, Garcia deals. And this is hit as a chopper. Third baseman's got it. He'll go the short way and step on third, and that's that. 
But the damage has been done, wouldn't you say? Five runs over for Quartz Hill, top of the first. We head to the bottom of the first here at Enlo Valley High School. Five nothing Royals. We'll be right back on L28. It's the bottom of the first, everybody, and welcome back to L28. Ronnie Wald, I'd love to say on a broadcast solo bid, but no, I'm so ably assisted in this broadcast. Tiffany Johnson handling so much now and making it a very special broadcast. So I can say broadcaster and, of course, ably assisted by Tiff as the first pitch comes over to Jonathan Edwards down low 1-0. 5 nothing Quartz Hill, just like that. I'd hate to say it's almost like an earthquake, an explosion of scoring on the part of Quartz Hill as the pitch taken high to an O. But I would say that's a minor tremor if it's a poor tens things to come in this ball game. Let's face it, five runs in the first inning, just like that. Down low, 3-0. and Jonathan Edwards followed by Andres Rubido and Jackson Williams for the Antelopes here in this, the bottom of the first inning. And this is hit on the ground right to the first baseman, Isaac Quintero, who will go to first for out number one. Our pitcher is Johnny Nahar. This is his fourth game working and his second start. Rubido will be stepping in there right now. And I've got Rubido this year on the San Lo Valley team that is hitting over 300. Oh, foul tip right back in the mask of the umpire, and he'll have to walk this one off. That's like taking a strong right to the jaw in a boxing match. But that's part and parcel of the umpire's trade. And they're even coming out, even the coaches and the players. You might disagree with the umpire, but no one wants to see him injured. And they get their share of foul tips and all the things that, again, give them sleepless nights when they go home and they'll have to jump into a jacuzzi over it. But nobody likes to be hit squarely in the face. And even though they've got that face guard on, they could bring on a concussion. So it looks like he's all set, ready to go. And Nahar ready to pitch away Dondris Rubido. And that's a strike. And he's behind right now to Johnny 0-2.
Johnny is a junior. And that one, he struck him out. Wow. Talking about authority on the pitcher's mound, and then again, having great command, a ground out first to Edwards, and now striking out Rubido with the bat left on his shoulder. And here comes Jackson Williams. The Antelopes and Royals going at it right now here on L28. Long pitch, he had to duck away from that, and that went on the fly 30 feet back to the backstop here. Nahar is a great story, <laughs> even though he's pitching for Quartz Hill. Talking about divided loyalties, as that's a slider inside. His dad, John Sr., is the vice principal of athletics here at Antelope Valley. He also has a great baseball resume as well. As Sun comes back, waved at and missed. He took a little something off that pitch. Very good. Jackson Williams certainly fooled. His dad played at Fresno State, but it all started for him at San Fernando High School. So he taught his son well, as that is a strike. Throwing laser beams right now is this young man, Nahar. Looking for a sign is catcher Esteban Sepulveda. Here's the offering. Swung on and missed, he's gone. Well, taking care of business, yeah. Three up and three down in the inning. Dispatching this Antelope team. Five nothing Royals here on L28. We'll be right back. And welcome back, everybody. Five nothing, Quartz Hill. Swung on and missed at the plate right now. Number again, 24. Jeffrey Cavanaugh took the big swing. Wanted to go yard. Up there in the jet stream, if you get it up there, not much of a breeze down here on Terra Firma, but up there, the breeze is there if he wants to go at it and launch one. Pitch down low, one and one. Kavanaugh walked in that big five-run explosion of the first inning. Garcia comes right back. There he hits it high in the air, but I'm afraid that's more like a three-iron, and now it's going to be taken by the left fielder who makes the grab, Andres Rubido, for out number one. So that has to be a great moment right now for the Antelope team, again, getting the first hitter of this inning and trying to Crawl back, scratch back in this ball game. So a fly out to left, and here comes Isaac Quintero. Great to see Quintero out there, and he's part of a triad, a duo. He's got a twin brother playing on this team with him, Ishmael. Isaac and Ishmael. 
This is a three hopper right down to the shortstop Edwards. He has a good arm, but that time he bounces in the dirt. Going to give chase is Aaron Mendez, the first baseman, and safe at first is Quintero. The error assessed that time. And the hitter, Blake Johnson. So Quintero's, they're related. Johnson's, no. Blake is followed by Troy in the order. There's the wind kicking up. Isn't it amazing? You mention something and then it happens. But that was just a quick, maybe a preview of things to come, as that's a hard fastball, great velocity, but taken outside, it is 1-0. Runner takes a very generous lead at first, and this is hit in the air, left center field, tracking it down, reaching up, making a great catch, Jeremiah Johnson, and scooting back to first, that time Isaac Quintero. He saved a run, no doubt. It'll only show up as a fly out in the scorebook, but at the last moment, it really was a mistake on the part of Johnson. He misplayed it. The ball did take off in the jet stream, and thanks to his great height, he was able to snare it. Now Troy Johnson at the plate, and the fastball high. Quick throw over to check the runner first. Hey, by the way, we've got that new feature, sharing scores of other games, and I know you're very interested in what's going on with Highland and Lancaster, both these teams tied for first place supremacy in the Golden League. They're in the top of the second. Highland eight, Lancaster nothing. Wow. You're talking about the plethora of runs here. What about that ball game with two top teams going at it as it's a curve ball that misses? Connor is at the plate. All right, thank you. I got straightened out here. So Connor up there right now with a wide stance. Runner at first. And just a moment ago, it was Jeremiah Johnson, as we noted, that made that great catch. So Jeremiah didn't make the catch. That's what they're telling me now. The catch was, thank you. So, Alfredo Lozano in center. Jeremiah, a fine player, but credit where credit's due, right? So, Lozano in center. Makes the grab. Runner goes, and here's Connor's smash, and it's caught in left field, Andres Rubido. So, they hit the ball well but no run scored in the inning. As a result, we've got one and a half, five nothing court sale on L28.
And just like that, this Quartz Hill team has decided to bring in a new pitcher. It's Ryan Cardenas in relief for Nahar. And the pitch over for a strike. Number 14 at the plate, it's Jacob Long, the cleanup hitter for this Antelope squad. And comes right back with the fastball, and boy, he has great velocity. Hear that popping of the mitt that time. Long himself, part of the San Lope Valley Lopes squad. They're adorning that white uniform. Over the top delivery, he was late on that, no doubt. Great velocity from Ryan Cardenas, and one away here in this, the second inning. Well, with Nahar leaving the ball game, we had a great story about him. We mentioned also his dad, vice principal of athletics here at AV. So the dad obviously had some torn loyalties as number 24, Jose Garcia, is at the plate. Another big guy that can send it far. And, and the pitch finds itself over for a strike. Hey, right beyond left field here is an amazing historical artifact on this, again, older campus as the pitch comes back, and he nubs it down to the third baseman, backhanded, here's the throw in the dirt, and he's safe at first, and he's gonna motor into second base, standing on that overthrow, and the error on the throw allows Jose Garcia all the way himself to second base. Anyway, we're talking about the farm, and it is beyond left field here this being the oldest campus in Lancaster in terms of high schools, but there the farm's been there for decades. I even drove by and I saw a Holstein out there, but they have farm animals and they end up getting sold at the local fair. And years ago, the fair was right across the street here on I Avenue, but they still auction them off. Okay, this is gonna be a bunt right back to the pitcher. Throw to first in time for the out and the runner himself, well, Mr. Garcia will scamper into third. So he wasn't bunting for a base hit, but it was a poor butt in the air. You got to get it down. And mainly, if you look at that unmowed grass right there in the infield, you lay a butt down there, and it's going to get caught up in, again, heavy grass. But instead, he popped in the air. But he did get the runner over to third. So we're going to give him a sacrifice. Luis Vega, the hitter, number, well, actually, Anthony Lopez, number nine. We got him right now. Garcia. Lopez, Lopez the starting catcher. So we bring up the farm because again, it's the only one among the Lancaster high schools and they do great work there. And we wanna give them credit. High pop up right side out of play. And they talk about the California economy, number one in America. And you think within California, what is the largest, again, business economy? It's not the movies. It's not even aerospace or tourism. It's agriculture. So Antelope Valley High School, keeping that alive here on campus. If you ever come over this field, you'll see it beyond left field. Okay, lays out a bunt in that tall grass, and not nearly in time, he was bunting what they call a suicide squeeze, but you can't bunt it right at the pitcher, and it ends up in the inning, no run scored, and a runner left on third. Now, to complete, it remains Quartz Hill 5, Antelope Valley nothing on L28. Sure glad you're with us. Yep.
All right, welcome back, everyone. First pitch comes over to Troy Johnson. It's a ball. He is now number four. And Coach gave us a different number today because he just wanted to play around with L28 and make our lives miserable, right? So, no, Troy Johnson, one of the Johnson guys out there, and he ends up taking a pitch inside. And stepping in there, don't get him confused, with Blake Johnson's at third, Troy's in right for this Quartz Hill team. Jose Garcia remains on the hill, even though he's down 5 nothing, and the offering's over for a strike. And we found out Jeremiah Johnson did not start this game in center. Late and last minute insertion of Lozano in center. And that's where he hits it out there to him. And it's going to be a solid base hit that time on the part of Troy Johnson. We're in this, the top of the third inning. 5 nothing, Quartz Hill. Five hits in this ball game, And also... Four walks, all of those coming in the first inning, again, by way of Jose Garcia. However, he's still out there. Quartz Hill has changed pitchers, and they're the ones up 5 nothing. I have Connor Gregory's spot right here, number 15. Connor it shows up as number 16 on my chart. Runner takes the lead off first base. Seth Humphreys has now stepped in there, and he's in Connor's spot, so we'll put him in right now as we go along here. Seth hum Humphreys. Garcia rocks and delivers, and that one is most definitely a strike. So maybe if they take an early lead, an uh, insurmountable lead, you'll start to see a lot of bench warmers get an opportunity in this game, and that may be true here with Humphreys. Down low in the dirt, a good save from the catcher, Lopez. Runner has to retreat back to first base. Great story about Damon Williams is coached his son's little league. And he was mainly involved with football all his career. And because of helping his son out, he got attracted to the game. It's a high pop-up near our cameraman over there. Uh, Ryan didn't move an inch. And it falls over there. Adrian, Aaron Mendez couldn't catch up to it. It got caught up in that swirling wind. Mendez went one way. The ball went the other. And Ryan was right there in the middle. Unflappable out there, wouldn't you say? All right, wind it up one more time. Ed Humphreys at the plate. Swung on and fouled away. Troy Johnson remaining right now at first base. Nobody out here in the top of the third. 5 nothing, Quartz Hill. So Damon Williams taking a different path as Aaron Cavanaugh, and that one, he struck him out. A curveball that really fooled Humphreys that time. He'll take the long walk right now back to the dugout. And now we've got number nine, Owen Rice, ready to check in. Remember, Rice came up with an RBI single back there in the five-run first inning. Here's the pitch to Rice, and it's down low. Well, anyway, Coach Williams made a career change to become a teacher in 2021 and ultimately was offered the baseball job here at Antelope Valley. Good for him. Fouled away this time by Rice. But it says a lot, again, for the metal, M-E-T-T-L-E, of Coach Williams, because he really was very generous, like Coach Kavanaugh, on his time, giving us stats and everything we needed. You would think maybe with the 0-10 record, he might want to climb under a rock or something, but he's very good. As it's ahead of the long drive, over the head of the left fielder, it'll go all the way to the wall. Taking the wide turn right now, that's Johnson. He's going to score. 
It's going to be on the overthrow. The runner's going to go down to third. Here's the throw, and it's not in time. Tremendous smack that time, way over the head of the left fielder, Andres Rubido, and it short hopped the wall. And remember we talked about Owen Rice hitting it where he ain't? And he can hit an occasional long ball, but he's really known as a singles hitter. I take all that back. Owen Rice can really send the ball a long way, as evidenced right there, with the double. And then on the overthrow, he took third base. Six nothing Quartz Hill. And we head to the top of the order in the person of Esteban Sepulveda. And the offering taken inside and tight. Obviously, Garcia's wanted nothing to do with Esteban because he's walked him twice. Now that breeze is turning inward. Let's see if he can fight through it. Swung on and fouled away. And it is one and one. One thing Damon Williams has had to, again, deal with is a number of freshmen trying to build a new legacy, a new team. And you got freshmen out there as opposed to sophomores. It's a world of difference in terms of baseball proficiency. Pitch taken outside two and one. Runner 90 feet away from scoring. He just got the double a moment ago, wound up at third base. I'm talking about Owen Rice. Six nothing Royals. Rocks in here she comes. Oh, high drive. It's deep left. It's going to be real trouble, and it ends up over the head of the center fielder, Lozano. Here comes the runner to the plate. Owen to score on the triple. The triple that time on the part of Sepulveda. Wow. I'm tremendous power that time from Esteban Sepulveda. We talked about the big expanse of field here. It may have gone out of the Quartz Hill ballpark. I think it may have. Because I haven't seen a ball hit that hard all season long. And still, he ended up with a triple. Oh, off the top of his helmet. Is he A-OK? -okay? Johnny Mares, he's going right down to first base, but he took it right off the top of the helmet. We heard it over here in our outside broadcast position. But he seems to be A-OK. -okay. The batting helmet has saved a lot of players over the years. So RBI, it's seven nothing Quartz Hill. Morris found himself again with that single. The pitch is a strike right now to number twenty four, Jeff Cavanaugh. Kavanaugh, 6-1 in all of it out there. Very impressive. And he's still a junior. Conceivably, he's still growing. The runner goes, and the catcher's not going to attempt to throw. He did not want that runner at third base, Esteban Sepulveda, to start heading home. So, so at the plate, waiting right now. And here it is, a line drive. It's center field and over the head of the right fielder who is playing in that position. Here comes one to score. One more will follow. And this is going to be another triple. Terrific job that time. And they just forewarned me. I don't want his mom to get down on me. Jeff is a senior and headed to Antelope Valley College next year as a football player. And boy, did he smack that the other way. Right center field, but giving chase Jacob, Jacob Long, who went the long way and couldn't catch up to it. Runner at third right now. Jeffrey Cavanaugh drives in two. I'm going to give you the unofficial score because I don't have a scoreboard. Nine nothing. Nine nothing. And by the way, last time we checked, Highland and Lancaster, Highland was up eight nothing. What's going on in the Antelope Valley? Pitch down low in the dirt right now. Number seven, Isaac Quintero at the plate. So four more over in this third inning for Quartz Hill. Roxanne, here's the delivery. Oh, he gets by the catcher, and yes, scooting home. 
Roe v. Kavanaugh, and now they're in double figures. How far can they go with it? Ten nothing, and again, this is only the third inning. We had the mercy rule come into effect in that softball game we did last week. Oh, that wound up 23-1. to one. And they're still, again, hitting away and having their way with Jose Garcia. It's a chopper this time up the middle, and it will sneak through for a base hit. Single for Quintero. And here comes Blake Johnson. Remember, Troy Johnson is the one that started the inning with the single. They've already batted around in the first inning, and they're looking to do it again right here. I only show one out, and that was a strikeout. One out, yeah, the strikeout, where he blew him away. He took command of Humphreys, but after that, they're just doing target practice with him as the pitch is a strike, and the count is one and one right now to Blake. Ten nothing Quartzo. There's no surprise. Again, we know, again, the top teams in the Golden League, how superior they are to the, again, the ones at the bottom. Pitch high, two and one. Garcia, battered and bruised, but still out there. Oh, a line drive hit with authority, and then a diving catch back at it by Jacob Long. Some retribution that time with Long missing that other long drive to right center off the bat, again, of Kavanaugh, but he makes a good catch there. And now it's Humphreys who took over for Troy Johnson, and they have batted around. Remember, Humphreys started the inning with a single. So Blake Johnson, if the right fielder doesn't make a heroic grab right there, the inning goes on and on and on. And this one fouled away. 0-1 oh, right now to Humphreys. Quartz Hill and Antelope Valley. The Royals and the Antelopes squaring off. 10 nothing. Quartz Hill. Third inning, fouled away. Quartz Hill comes in with an overall record of 18-5. And in Golden League action, eight and two. They played Palmdale twice. Palmdale atop the heap, or should I say they're four and five, I'm sorry. They played Lancaster twice in extra innings, a drive to center, and he reaches up and makes a grab at Lozano. He has that way about him that he can just reach up at the last minute and spear it, or he'd be in a lot of trouble. No, Lancaster and, of course, Quartz Hill played twice, and both in extra innings, and they split the two games. All right, 10 nothing Quartz Hill on L28. Fourteen.
Bottom of the third, everybody. Now 10 nothing Quartz Hill. And number 28, Jeremiah Johnson will check in right now, followed by the number nine hitter, Aaron Mendez, and then the top of the order in Jonathan Edwards. Twice in this ball game, in one inning, Quartz Hill has batted around. Finally, mercifully, for the San Luis Valley team, they finally got down to the numbers eight and nine hitters right here, and we're all the way into the third inning. By the way, brand new pitcher out there. So, Kavanaugh using his pitching staff, giving a lot of people an opportunity. In a ball game, they expect to win. As we noted in the pregame show, remember, Kavanaugh has been with Quartz Hill 19 years. He has never, I mean never, lost a game to Antelope Valley. Pitch inside, did he hit him with it? No, he didn't. He's a big guy up there, but he looked like a ballet dancer, and Nuriev on that. He got out of the way in a hurry. The new pitcher's L London Palmer. As the pitch, that time's a strike. It's one and one. Nahar, Cardenas, and Palmer. The three pitchers in this ballgame so far for Quartz Hill. The fastball, boy, does he have velocity. Oh, and that was a strike, 0 and 1. That got my blood up that time. I mean, that was a blur. He could really bring it. Rocks, and here's another one. Oh, it's inside. And he probably did hit him that time with the pitch. And when Palmer lets loose of one and it hits you, you're going to feel it for quite a while. Thanks for the raspberry. Damon Williams wanted to ask his player if he's A-OK. -okay. And Jeremiah Johnson says he is A-OK, -okay and he's going to first base after being hit by the pitch. And the fans here show their love for Jeremiah and as he makes it down to first base. So to begin things here in the bottom of the third inning, down 10 nothing. coach needs to go out there and just see if London Palmer is A-OK. -okay. He ends up plunking double J, Jeremiah Johnson, and the hitter is Aaron Mendez. Bottom of the third. Let's see how they plot strategy. It's been a long, hard ride for the San Luis Valley team. And they've got to face off against Quartz Hill on Tuesday. The pitch is a strike. The runner goes. Here's the throw. And it looks like he's out. Outstanding throw from Esteban Sepulveda. So we know about his uh, hitting exploits. Wow, what a cannon-like right arm that time taking care of business and throwing out Jeremiah Johnson. Now one away, Mendez waiting, and the pitch, that's inside and tight, and the count even at one and one. The bat going back and forth in a hypnotic state. If you watch it long, you know, you go to the county fair, there's always a hypnotist there. If they ever watch... Follow the bat here of this young man up there. You start to go into a dreamlike state. Look at that. All right, the pitch was inside. 2-1 offering. Swung on and missed 2-2. Two and two. Aaron Mendez, the number nine hitter. Then we head right to the top of the order. On deck, Jonathan Edwards for the Lopes. 10-0 Quartz Hill. Fouled away. So a good crowd off to our left here supporting their Antelope Valley squad. And then a few folks over there, and they've got the umbrellas working here, showing their Quartz Hill pride. That's going to be hit on the ground, and it's going to sneak through for a base hit. Inside, third and down the line. The left fielder got to it in time. And as a result, because he got to it in time, it only ended up being a single for Aaron Mendez. Hey, there's something very special going on with this Quartz Hill team, and it's the Quintero twins. What a story. Isaac and Ishmael of biblical proportions, if you know what I mean. And they were born only two minutes apart. Yeah, the older brother, the younger brother. It's Isaac is the younger brother. Ishmael is the older Ishmael has nine wins on the team this year. 
Uh, that was a quick throw over to first base, and it turned out right then that the runner was able to take second base just like that. And look at Aaron. He needs to go over there and confer with the umpire, find out what happened. Anyway, as for the Quinteros, good luck to them because Isaac is the starting first baseman. Ishmael is one of the best pitchers around, not just in the Golden League, but his nine wins are among the best in the CIF southern section. So they did rule that runner out at second. He wanted to stay there, firmly ensconced at second. Damon pleaded his case like a Philadelphia lawyer, but it didn't work. So now, two away. And the hitter at the plate takes it inside. They're very mindful of London Palmer, who has a great heater, but he's also can be wild at times. So Aaron Mendez thrown out at second. He's gone. Edwards, the hitter at the plate, number seven, swung on and missed. The battery, Palmer and Sepulveda, comes right back. Oh, a very weak swing. He didn't want to really swing, and he got halfway through. He says, oh, I've got to commit myself and finish the swing. What great bit of pitching that time on the part of Palmer to, again, blow him away. 10-0, Quartz Hill, here on, again, L28. I'm waiting for someone to talk to me in this. We swing down to the top of the fourth inning. Welcome back, everyone. It's 10-0 Quartzel here taking on, of course, Antelope Valley. And by the way, we do have a score, and it's a similar one. But it blows you away with two top-notch teams, one dominating the other so much. It's Highland 10, Lancaster nothing in the top of the fourth inning. So a couple of 10-0 scores. However, here, it was expected there. Oh. That's baseball. And it's almost like a horse race and coming down and jockeying for position, if you know what I mean. Number four at the plate right now, stepping in there, it's going to be Troy Johnson. And again, Jose Garcia down 10 nothing. They haven't brought the hook with them. He remains out there for the Lopes, high chopper, it's gonna be trouble. Vega's got it, here's the throw, not in time. So Vega, first time at third base, and we mentioned Jacob Long, his first time in right field. Remember, one Jacob Long had trouble with that long fly ball, but he redeemed himself a little bit later with a diving catch. But you can see Luis Vega, he himself is not really ready for the hot corner. So the hitter at the plate right now, runner at first, and that was a curveball that time from Garcia down low into the dirt. It's one and oh.
Bo Care at the plate right now taking over. And again, Kavanaugh getting some, again, people opportunities to play in this ballgame as the pitch is taken high that time. Here's the pitch, and excuse me, Swain, fouled away right side, out of play. Count right now, two and one to Bo. Runner for Quartz Hill, taking his appropriate lead. Right now, first base, that's Troy Johnson. Here's the offering, and that one dips over for a strike. It's two and two. Runner at first, nobody out. We're here in the fourth inning. Comes right back, bounces in there, gets away, and he can run forever in a day there. And it's funny, he just decides to hold up at second base. But with all that room to the backstop, I'm sure some players do take liberties and try to take off for third base. But that time, Troy did not. So he's at second base. Bokar is at the plate right now, waiting for his pitch. Garcia trying to have an inning like he had in the second inning where he went through swimmingly. The difficult innings, first and third. Inside third and down the line, and it is a fair ball. Johnson will hold up a third on the double that time from Bokar. And there you have it, runners at second and third. Owen Rice will check in right now, who's had a very good ball game. He's two for two, got himself a couple RBIs. And Aaron Williams, or check that Damon Williams, needs to go out there and talk to Jose Garcia. It's about time. You have to be able to get connected with him. Number 12 is taking over for Garcia. Jackson Williams. So Garcia was gone. Williams, and, and by the way, Williams having a bit of a problem here in this inning by surrendering the single and the double. And they have to talk about pitching to the red-hot Owen Rice and how to deal with him right now. So new pitcher out there decided to go the Antelopes with number seven, Jonathan Edwards who started the game at shortstop. So they're going to make a switch right now. Number 12, Jackson Williams. Let's see where he's going to wind up. So Jonathan Edwards will take over. Garcia, Williams, and now Edwards. Edwards should keep his place in the batting order in the leadoff position. We'll see. Right now they're working out the appropriate changes, and we'll see Jonathan Edwards, what he can do. He's a 432 hitter, but we haven't seen him in terms of handling the pitching mound. He's also one of the best sluggers on the team at 648. So while we have this chance, we wanted to mention a sad day in Major League Baseball yesterday with the loss of Hall of Fame manager Whitey Herzog, but also a former Brooklyn Dodger, the last Brooklyn Dodger, Carl Erskine, passed away yesterday in Indiana. He was so important to a team in Brooklyn that had never won a World Series until 1955, and he did make it to L.A. when the Dodgers moved west and played for a couple of years in the Coliseum. Anyone that had any contact with Carl always did say that he was about the friendliest, best guy they ever met. After he left baseball, turned out he and his wife, who he was married to for over 70 years, had a young son, Jimmy, 1960, unfortunately born with Down syndrome. Anywhere Carl went, he brought Jimmy along with him. And Jimmy was as beloved as Carl. 
in different social circles. Jimmy passed away himself last year at the age of 63. Well, anyway, when Carl went to any special banquets or events, he would hold up two medals. One was for the World Series Championship 1955. The other was for Jimmy's Special Olympics prize. As the hitter steps in right now, and first pitch swinging and through for a base hit. Here comes a runner to score. That's going to make it 11 nothing Quartz Hill. Nice bit, bit of hitting that time and very confident against the brand-new pitcher, Jonathan Edwards. That was Owen Rice with another RBI. I've got him down with four in the ball game. And again, as we noted, Royals up 11 nothing. Anyway, when Carl Erskine went to a special event, he held up his World Series ring. He held up Jimmy's Special Olympics prize. And he'd say to the crowd, to the assemblage, what do you think is more important? And the crowd would go hush. Then you'd start to see some tears would fall at the event. And then an applause for Carl Erskine, because Carl would hold up Jimmy's Special Olympics and say that was greater than his World Series ring. That was the kind of guy Carl Erskine was, who we lost yesterday in Indiana at the age of 97. This one is over for a strike right now, 11 nothing Quartz Hill. And boy, has the wind really picked up at this juncture of the ball game. Quartz Hill's number 20. Jason Gaunt, tw number 20, stepping in there right now. Up 11 nothing. I don't see an out recorded in this inning. Remember, we're working without the scoreboard, so we're working from behind. But that's why they brought in this pitcher, Edwards. And he threw some junk up there, and he swung at something he should never have. It was about two feet in front of the plate. So that hitter was definitely fooled for Quartz Hill. Now we do have one down. And they're going to make a change. Johnny Morris is done. Number 18 will step in there right now. A left-handed bat. Morris, unless he's been moved to a different position in the, again, field, they're going to deal with right now the left-handed bat of this young man. The pitch, you can tell he's not, again, a pure pitcher as the pitch, however, that time was a strike. It's 0-1. Maddox Farrell stepping in there now for Morris. And he hits it high, and we lose it also in the high sky syndrome as it ends up, again, hooking foul and out of play. Again, last time we checked, Highland and Lancaster, Highland up 10 nothing in the fourth. 11 nothing here between Quartz Hill and, of course, Antelope Valley. The pitch, and it's fisted foul up and over behind us. And the wind getting more pervasive at this stage of the ball game. Let's see if it will help him because it's blowing upwards of 20 miles an hour left and for left-handed hitter he's benefited because it's blowing out to right field but he goes the other way with it it's a line drive and it's dropped by the center fielder lozano here comes a runner to score the 12th run of the ball game for this quartz hill team and he's going to end up on second base farrell with the double one two three four Four extra base hits in this ball game on the part of Quartz Hill. I've got one down in the inning. The hitter should be, again, Jeff Cavanaugh's spot. But they've decided, let's see, at number 25, I had Cavanaugh down as 24. But anyway, he slashes it, and it goes right back to the pitcher for the out. Beautiful job grabbing it that time. But remember, Jonathan Edwards is a shortstop. 
He knows how to handle those. Anyway, one run over makes it 11 to nothing, and we'll be right back on L28. Andres Rubido, Jackson Williams, and Jacob Long right now. The numbers two, three, and four hitters in the lineup for Antelope Valley. And a brand new pitcher out there, and he's got some sweet heat as well. As he's the number four hitter, or number four pitcher in the ballgame for Quartz Hill, Jacob Ariano. The pitch right back to Ariano in the box. Line drive handled it beautifully, and we have one down here in this, the bottom of the fourth inning. The pitcher is really just a sitting target out there. And once you release the baseball, you become a fielder in effect. And you better be ready for anything to come right back. And uh, no doubt Jacob was. At the plate, here's Jackson Williams. Swung on and missed at the high hard one. We're here at Antelope Valley High School, the antiquated field. Oh, what memories they have out there. And legendary players, part of the landscape as the pitch is taken inside. On deck, J Jacob Long. One down here in the bottom of the fourth inning. 11 nothing Quartz Hill. Swung on and just got a little piece of that one. Fouled away. Jackson Williams up there right now knowing they're down 11 nothing, and they're going to have to find a way to get back in this ballgame. Instead, he pops it up. It's a mile high. The pitcher wants it. The pitcher's got it. Usually, you don't want the pitcher involved in that at all. He could back up into the mound and seriously injure himself. They don't want the pitcher involved. One of the infield contingent will come over and call off the pitcher, but unfortunately, in that instance, the pitcher, Jacob Ariano, was hard-headed. He wanted to take it. So as a result, two down, and here's Jacob Long. The pitch to Jacob is a ball.
Jacob comes right back over the top delivery and good enough for a strike. Jacob in this ball game already struck out. He's 0 for 1 in the game. We talked about Emerald Valley. They have a commendable batting average. That's not where their problems lie. Fouled away. They're hitting 290 cumulatively as a team. But their team ERA is way off the charts. I mean, it's really disappointing. <laughs> it's in double figures. I mean, a good ERA, three. In the high school realm, five or under. Their ERA is something like 12, 14. It's, it's not even worth repeating. And that has been the bane, B-A-N-E, for them this season and maybe several seasons before as that was fouled away and it was a strike. They are a team that's trying to get settled. But again, going back 19 years, Kavanaugh has beaten them every single time. Talking about a drubbing. Fastball down low. Now we've gone about as far as we can go. Two down in the fourth. A lot of confidence from Jacob Ariano up there on the bump. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Swung on and missed strike three. And the look of incredulity. In fact, the hitter long looking to the skies for redemption. Can't get it that time. Anyway, we're headed to the fifth. 11 nothing Quartz Hill. So glad you're with us on L28. Hey, just a reminder, make sure you join us for the annual California Poppy Festival coming up this weekend. It's at the Antelope Valley Fairgrounds. Fun in the extreme. They got a carnival out there, games, and of course, the poppy. Oh, they seem to be in bloom everywhere. I took a drive over to Hatchapi Pass. Oh, the color was exuberant. Really enjoyed it. And it's great that the poppy is finally getting its due, right? Again, this weekend at the Anna Valley Fairgrounds. 11 0 Quartz Hill in this one. Hit her at the plate. First pitch swinging. Laces it into left field for a base hit. So, runner at first base right now. So runner at first base, thanks to the leadoff single. J Jason Uribe at, Uribe at first base after the single. And the pitch gets away all the way to the backstop. And Jason, he's not going anywhere. If there's any time to take off, and make something happen, and he stayed firmly ensconced, glued to the first base bag. A 
All right, here comes the next one. And I believe at the plate, yeah, that's Humphreys. Humphreys coming in and pitch hitting and taking over in Connor Gregory's spot. And the pitch to him right now over for a strike. The wind always an issue here. It's blowing out directly to center. However, the ballpark may be too big for any home run. It's just 400 full feet to center as a pitch taken high that time. And we saw the hardest hit ball of the day was Esteban, Esteban Sepulveda, and it didn't leave the yard. It was a triple. Pitch taken outside, the count even at two and two. Humphreys at the plate right now. Runner takes his lead off first. And 11 nothing Quartz Hill. We're in this, the top of the fifth inning. It's taken high, ball four. So now you've got Royals at first and second. All right, hitter at the plate right now, and knowing that they've got runners at first and second, you know, they talk about piling on. They're already up 11 nothing. They do want more as this is first pitch swinging. Uh, it's going to be a ground ball to shortstop. Goes to the second baseman, throw his glove. A golden opportunity to try to get the twin killing, the pitcher's best friend, and it ends up getting a, to be a miscue that time. So all we can say that time for the second baseman, it was Jackson Williams, unfortunately, got a little ahead of himself. He got to catch the ball and then pivot and make the play. And we've seen it happen so many times in the basketball court, too. They take off, they try to score, and ultimately they find out that they lose the basketball. Same thing here. Ian Simpson is now the hitter at the plate. Wholesale changes on the part of, of course, Head coach Kavanaugh as the pitch is a strike, 0 and 1. Better than a bingo game. They're changing numbers on me right and left. All right, this is going to be a ground ball. The worm raker knocked down by the third baseman who has only one place to go with it, and he elects to step on third base. So Humphreys is gone. We'll head back to the dugout. And the hitter at the plate, and he's got some power. So let's see if he's got some smack. We haven't seen him before. Number 17. Oh, look at that great swing, and the power shown in it is going to be a base hit to right center. Center fielder Lozana gets it back in, and we've got bases loaded right now for Quartz Hill. Ozzie Sanchez now will step into the batter's box. He's using his complete bench right now. And I'm talking about head coach Aaron Kavanaugh. And the pitch is a curveball, good enough for a strike. Remember, Jonathan Edwards took over for William Edwards, who then took over for the starter, Jose Garcia. Three pitchers in this ballgame. That's off the plate that time with the curve. Count even at one and one. Ozzy at the plate. He has the power. Let's see what he can do with it. Big full swing that time, fouled away. By the way, Quartz Hill, we talked about the hundreds of high schools in the state, and they're ranked 184th. Again, you don't raise an eyebrow at that, uh, at that with the thousands of high schools out there. But there's 800 alone in the southern section. Pitch, that one took a little something off of it. It floated in. It's a ball, two and one.
And Edwards comes right back there. Check that. Jackson Williams, number seven. Edwards took over from w Williams, and he's on the mound. Pitch misses. So they're just running out of pitchers. There's no doubt about it. Still, it's an 11 nothing lead for Quartz Hill. Comes right back. Up high, ball four. So that will walk in a run that time and make it 12 nothing. And the pain continues. Like a form of water torture, drip, drip, drip. No doubt on this Antelope Valley hopes of somehow breaking that long losing streak. Another new player in there right now as he singles appropriately enough to right center, driving in a run and making it 13 nothing. The hitting onslaught continues. 15 nothing. thank you. My apologies. Thank you. One down and 15 nothing. Okay, now Aaron, last name, of course, Damon Williams needs to speak to his pitcher and have a conference on the hill. So while they do, we'll take a break. Now they tell us it's 15 nothing. It starts to become irrelevant, just like last week's 23 to one score. It's just, again, a deluge of runs. And unfortunately, if you're an Antelope Valley fan, you don't have much to cheer about. 15 to nothing is. We'll be right back. Diego Rosales will step in there right now at the batter's box with the runners at first and second, 15 to nothing. So many runs, they overwhelmed us here. So nonetheless, having said that, the first offering that time on the part of Jonathan Edwards had taken high, 1-0. Comes right back with a pitch down low in the dirt. We've only got one down here in the inning. And remember, it's the top of the fifth. It's a painful situation. And the pitcher, and it slips away from the catcher. He retrieves it, but nobody's going anywhere. Anyway, Coach Cavanaugh, when we asked him, well, you know, how long have you, again, had this winning streak against Anno Valley? And he knew right away the number, 34 straight encompassing 19 years. But then he said the next thing, the proviso that was the most telling, as that's an excuse me swing fouled away. And the next thing he told me was, and I can't tell you how many years it was before I showed up that the streak was going on and on and on. I mean, that's 19 years. Maybe it goes back into the 70s. It's somewhere buried with the Shroud of Turin. We'll never really know the pitch taken high. So right now, Rosales at the plate looking for more. And a confident hitter at the plate and getting the opportunity to play, which is a great thing. And he hits it hard right down to the first baseman. Mendez decides to go to second for one. That's a very difficult play. Runner did score, making it 16 to nothing. But whenever you take it, you probably want to go to the bag. Instead, they wanted to start themselves a 3-6-3 three, three double play. And that throw from first base down to second base and trying to angle it around the runner is a difficult one. 
you would think he would just want to go to the bag and get the second out. Instead of having two on and two out, they still have one out and the base is loaded. Swung on and missed that time. Tall, angular young man. Jeffrey Cavanaugh and Vincent Sanchez. Okay, thank you. He's tall like Cavanaugh. He's both 6'2", but he ends up grounding out. But that does drive in a run, number 17. I'm getting dizzy from these numbers. We are very apprised and we're very aware of the mercy rule at work in the basketball realm. I know that they have to complete at least five innings before they can kick in. We're upwards of 17 now. And with the hitter at the plate, waiting for the right-hander deals to him, it's in the dirt. Isaac Estrada now, we get a good look at him. So one thing we can say, pretty much the complete roster is being used by Kavanaugh and getting their day in the sun. This is going to be a high pop-up right side, and it's going to end up flaring foul and out of play. Jonathan Edwards moving from the shortstop position to the pitching mound has had no better success than his compatriots before him, Williams and Garcia. Here's the pitch, and good enough for a strike. Top of the fifth, 17 nothing. it is. And the offering finds itself down low in the dirt. Scoring first and scoring in bunches was this Quartz Hill team, which had itself a 5 nothing lead early on after one. After three innings, they ran it up to nine. The pitch ends up right there as a ball, and they've gone as far as they can go on this one, a full count, three and two. Two down in the inning. Runners take their appropriate leads from second and third. Comes right back. And that's a strikeout. He takes care of business. But more damage inflicted on Antelope Valley as the score is now Quartz Hill 17. And Antelope Valley nothing. We'll be right back on L28.
Welcome back, everyone, to L28. Ronnie Wald bringing you the action here. And it's 17-0, Quartz Hill. And the Mercy Rule ready to kick into effect. A 10-run disparity after five innings. And the hitter at the plate, Jose Garcia, taking a pitch for a strike, 0-1. Bo Care, remember him? He came up and himself had a hit earlier. He's now taking over as the pitcher on the hill for Quartz Hill. And this pitch taken high. Slips out of the glove of the catcher, and it is a ball, and the count two and oh. Nahar, Cardenas, Palmer, Ariano, and now Care. Those are the pitchers this afternoon for Quartz Hill. The fastball, good enough for a strike. Hey, I wonder if that mercy rule is going to kick in. Last time we checked in the fourth inning, it was a 10 nothing plurality lead for Highland over Lancaster. And that one's good enough for a strike. So Bo, another one. Go to a country hardball. There's nothing scientific about this guy in the hill. He just throws as hard as he can, and the hitter swings as hard as he can. Comes right back. That's going to be hit in the air. Uh-oh. It's going to be high sky syndrome, but the second baseman calls off the first baseman and squeezes it for out number one. Hey, just a reminder, make sure to subscribe to the City of Lancaster YouTube channel to receive weekly notifications on our game coverage. Share this link to watch your favorite players on the field. All right, checking in now, Luis Vega. I'll say one thing as he swung, uh, swings at that fastball and misses. Uh, we haven't had, again, the... The deluge of players offered in this ballgame by Damon Williams and Low Valley. In fact, he had a number of players that couldn't make this game because of illness or they left town or whatever. That slips away. It's a ball, one and one. A no, most notably, Anthony Cardenas, a 438 hitter, not available this afternoon for Damon. Care comes back. High hard one. Why did he go fishing for that and couldn't reel it in? How can you? That's way out of the strike zone. That's a low success pitch. You, I think they used to call it a sucker pitch. Well, he was that time. <laughs> one and two. Hit hard, though. Redemption, but a one hopper to the second baseman. Fields it cleanly. Flips the first. And the last chance here with the mercy rule instituted at this juncture of the game, the bottom of the fifth, will come in the person of number nine, Anthony Lopez. Quartz Hill smelling a victory, and why not? It's a football-like score, 17 nothing. The numbers get so high, as we just noted a moment ago, and with our softball game last week, 23-1, to it just becomes irrelevant. As the pitch over for a strike right now to Jose. We're in the bottom of the fifth, everybody. And Quartz Hill with the sizable lead. Did he go fishing? No. He was tempted on the high hard one, but he wouldn't go for that. Tiff is ready to spring into action and get a great post-game interview for us. Care delivers. Swung on and missed. And two strikes, they're down to their final strike. No one and one, pardon me. Well, down to their final batter, at least. If they get that far, number six is waiting on deck. Let's see if they do. Oh, it's a high pop-up. Is it playable? Here comes the right fielder, and it will drift foul and out of play. Great effort that time on the part of the right fielder and the second baseman. Trying to get to it and, and end this ball game. Quartz Hill will be euphoric, but the pain continues if you're an Animal Valley fan. These two teams are going to face off at Quartz Hill on Thursday. Uh. I remember the ABC show. It was called Wide World of Sports, The Thrill of Victory. Victory. The agony of defeat, and there it is right there. He struck him out. 
So they feel that agony, and it's gone on now 35 straight times for 19 years for Aaron Cavanaugh. Antelope Valley ends up losing 17 to nothing. For Antelope Valley, they fall now to 1 and 15 overall, 0 and 11 in league. And for, of course, the Royals of Quartz Hill, they improved to 19 and 5 and 9 and 2 in league. And we did not get a final score from Highland and Lancaster last time we checked. Highland up 10 0 after four innings. Okay, the obligatory handshake out there. A lot of pleasure out there for the winning team and a lot of pain for the Antelope Valley squad. And we'll come back and then we'll get ready to send it over to Tiff and our post game show. Again, the Royals win this one 17 to nothing this afternoon in Lancaster, California. We'll be right back.
Hi, everyone. Ronnie Wald back here at Antelope Valley High School. And I can't say it was the most thrilling type game. It wasn't a close one. In fact, it turned out to be a 17 nothing whitewash of Quartz Hill over AV High. And all I can say is that we really didn't have to play past the first inning, did we? Because right there, breaking the ice, was Antelope Valley fighting right there. Quartz Hill scoring five runs against them and then four more in the third inning, and it was fait to complete for, again, Antelope Valley, who has lost at least 34 straight times over 19 years against this Quartz Hill team. Anyway, we're so glad you're with us on this broadcast, nevertheless, and we're so grateful for our L20 staff putting it together in always Spartan conditions. So thanks a lot, and moreover, thanks for your viewership. So right now we're going to send it out to Tiff for the postgame show. So take it away, Tiff. What do you think of the coach loss today? He took over the team last year. What do you feel like the missing puzzle piece to the magic happening again? Uh, just the experience. I think we got a lot of young guys out here. We got a lot of young experienced guys out here. And you know, we just try to put it together and, and be competitive, really. So that's what we're doing. What practice style are you going to continue to do, especially for next season's approach to make sure that this team can put AV back on the map? You know, we're just going to keep doing what we're doing. We've showed improvement from uh, last year to this year. So, you know, baby steps are we're going to keep coming. Uh, hopefully in a couple of years from now, we'll be at that point where we can compete with these bigger teams and, and kind of take that over. So um, that's the goal. Hopefully we can get there. And if, if we don't, hey, we're just going to keep trying to, to chuck away. And as you said, you need more players on the roster. You have short options. I saw that you switched out your pitcher a couple of times. So what is your go-to mentality for pitching practice? Pitching practice, man, we're just trying to get these guys to throw strikes. Be consistent with their, their pitches. Um, you know, try to keep the stuff out of the dirt. we got a young catcher who's, who's trying to learn as well. So um, just trying to make his life not as difficult. Um, but also just, just trying to be in there and throw strikes and let the defense kind of take over. Sometimes we, we, uh, we get too involved in trying to get strikeouts and trying to take over. And, and I get it. You know, they, they have a bunch of errors behind them at times. But we still try to preach the philosophy of, you know, trust your defense and, and let them make plays. And as you said, your son is part of the team, and I know you want to instill him to be not just a great player, but a great young man. And you're doing the same tactic with the rest of the boys, starting a summer program for them to give them more confidence. So what is your approach as a human to coach these young men? You know, if we're, if we're not going to be winners, the one thing we need to be is, is good young men and good students. So what we try to make sure is that you know we're student first, and then we're an athlete later. So um, what we try to promote is, hey, get it done in the classroom, so we're not worried about that aspect of it. Um, but at the same time, hey, at one point, we're going to need you to be a ball player sooner or later, right? So we're, we're always looking towards the future. We got a bunch of young guys on the team, and you know, hopefully, getting the experience at the varsity level right now will get them better in the years to come when they're juniors and seniors. Well, thank you so much, Coach. Good luck on your career, and we'll see you shortly. Thank you. Well, guys, today AV High School got the defeat from Quartz Hill High School. But as I said earlier in the game, I haven't met anybody more proud than Lopes alum. So if you're an alum, check in to your school. Pour into this program. Coach Damon has a heart and soul to pour into these young men. And I challenge you to do the same as well. This is Tiffany Johnson with L28 Sports. We'll see you next week. Bye.